Welcome back to a fresh episode of Patch and Play. This time no cars, but our subject still has wheels. It's our electric scooter that has suffered some liquid damage. So what happened is, without us noticing, water had dripped on the dashboard button of the scooter and eventually got inside. Now the button does all kinds of weird things. Hmm. Now this shouldn't be hard to fix, I think. Okay guys, so this button has now a mind of its own and I thought I would get away with just uh, spraying some contact cleaner in there. But uh, as you have seen, that wasn't the case. Luckily, I do have these buttons here, my electronics connection. Oh, I did something. So. Let's remove some screws and then see if we can disconnect it. That will be easier to solder. You can, of course, just buy a new board. It's, uh, I think it's between five and 10 euro. So if you don't like soldering, you can also buy the new board. And uh, now the question is if we can remove the connector from the board, the glued on there. Ah. ah, it's a bit greasy because of the contact cleaner I've used before. I think it's it's coming apart. Ah, damn, that's a tough connector. But as you can see, just you can just pull it, and then I believe here is another set of connectors a little cable tie it's easily replaceable ah, there we go the rest it's crazy they actually did a good job in waterproofing everything except the button so i'll show you here is the cover and the water actually came in through here. I did clean it up a bit, but it had this nasty uh, greenish oxidized look. At least the colors are consistent. So you can't really make any mistakes here. Here we go. Well, the board is out. Now we can move on to my workbench. So, let's do a quick test here. Hmm. But here is some blackish residue. The button seems fine. Uh, I'm gonna put this under the microscope and inspect it. Yeah, I did clean up that print a, a little bit. There was some residue here. I think some leftover from the contact spray. And uh, we also saw that uh, one of the little legs from the button is corroded. Now I do have another button, very similar, but it's a bit thicker. So I'm just going to reconnect the boards and see if, uh, if cleaning up the muck uh, did do anything. Uh, because actually this morning I did use a little bit of contact cleaner and then um, it worked perfectly. But after a while it started uh, doing its uh, crazy things again. So maybe I, uh, I did use a bit too much of that uh, contact cleaner. It's also 
quite greasy. It's quite old, so I probably should throw away the can and, uh, and get some uh, get some better cleaner. Uh, so I'm gonna wipe everything down, reconnect it, and uh, see what uh, what it does. If this doesn't work, then we'll re replace the button anyway. But it's uh, it's worth a shot. Red to red. I think for this one, you need to be careful. It's only very thin pins. There we go. Let's see. Hmm. Yeah, I barely touched it. So I'm not sure. Oh, the light goes on. Light goes off. Okay. This is pretty normal. Off. It goes off. Hmm. It jumps straight to support, so could be ah no. Look, it's it's going crazy again. Ah, light goes on. And it's out again. Okay, so I think the next thing we can try is replace the button and uh, hope that does the trick. I've put my soldering iron to 270 degrees Celsius. I don't know if that's enough. Uh, we're going to remove the legs one by one and we move on to the next one. So adding a bit of solder. Also, these tweezers are really rubbish. So if you see this on AliExpress, don't buy it. It's, uh, it's rubbish. They bend way too easy. Go. It's number three. Oh, oh sh yeah. Ah, damn. I melted the display. <laughs> okay, well, I guess it still works. Oh, damn. That was uh, a bit uncautious of me. Last feet, last foot. Okay, there we go. It's a bit of a shame, but uh, the black cover will um, come over it, so maybe you won't see it. Although I highly doubt that. Uh, that's stupid. Well, this is the other button. It's, it's a bit thicker, so I don't know if it's going to fit. Let's. I think we'll have to cut the feet off a little bit. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Where are my tweezers? Not tweezers. Where is my clipping tool? I'm going to cut off. go and then solder it where are the shitty tweezers soldering something on something is always easier than off this is going quite smoothly I'm adding some extra solder to the pads There we go.
push it down. There we are. Okay. Well, it's not 100% straight. Uh, it seems I don't have a lot of patience today. But I think it's going to work. So let's connect it and see if it lights up. If it doesn't, then something else might be wrong with the board. And due to the price being so low, I don't know if it's really worth trying to find out what's wrong with the board. Although it could be interesting. Always like to know what's wrong with something. That's my disease. This is a very annoying connector. Hey. So far, so good. Lights on. I think it's fixed. Can I turn it up? Yeah. Cool. This is really... Ah, uh, this is not the first time this happens to me that I actually... So I'm gonna put the wires back inside to reconnect uh, the little zip tie here, screw everything back together and I think then we can call this fixed, although I did destroy it a bit more. I just used a little bit of black marker to restore um, the dash and honestly I don't think it's, uh, it's too bad. Let's see if yeah, the button does transfer. The final test will be if everything is back together. New zip tie. And we can shove this back down. We can also remove the screws in the handlebar. And then, uh, it's going to be easier. But yeah, I'm gonna take out those screws, otherwise it will not pass. Well, if you ever bought anything from IKEA, you do have a ton of these. And I do need a little bit of leverage here. So with, this, with a flat hat, you can actually get a little bit of grip on the wire and push it down. Who would have thought this would be the most difficult part of this repair? Come on. Okay. It's still happy. Unfortunately, we have an issue because this button is a bit taller than the old one. You see, every time you touch it, button. Of course. Now, I'm going to try and make a nice clean cutout over here and then maybe we can fit it over the button. It's not like it's uh, watertight anyway. Okay, so I did cut out the rubber now. Now it does fit. You do have to push a bit harder. But it's definitely doable. I think we're done now. The light goes on, light goes out, I can change modes. And I can turn it off. Great! 
A quick thank you for watching this uh, different episode uh, about fixing an e-scooter. It's uh, something different than uh, a car. I am, however, a bit bummed out by the fact that I wasn't um, careful enough during soldering. Uh, it seems that I've lost my touch a little bit. Although the replacement of the button was uh, a success and uh, actually my button collection here does pay off. Um, I want to point out, however, when dealing with these small electronics, even the smallest difference can be an issue. And if you, I don't know if you can see it here with the crappy front camera, but this original button is a lot flatter than this one. So uh, I had to cut away the rubber thingy, the rubber seal. Uh, which is okay, I guess uh, you could also just buy new parts from AliExpress. I guess you will be spending like uh, 10, 10 to 15 euro on it, so that's also a good idea if you ever face a problem with this kind of scooter. I guess this is the advantage of stuff from China, is that uh, most of the time you can find re replacement parts on the big AliExpress. Anyway, I have hope. I hope this was an interesting episode. If you're uh, if you're watching this uh, because you want to fix your own scooter, please let me know in the comments. Uh, I, I really am super uh, excited to learn about people actually learning from my videos. If this video was helpful to you or entertaining, please consider subscribing as it can help me grow my channel. And I will see you next time.